Mr. Gilstrap in studio with me. He's uh, doing the five for five co-hosting week today. That's the uh, the full while full I'm on man. deadline. So you know that's that's yeah. kind of a that's that's a big deal. You know, I mean, it's, hey, I want to put a shout out to the, going on the on the previous segment. I think that there's a there's a special place in heaven for grandparents in general, but for the folks for the grandparents who are thrust into this situation, I'm going to guess in large measure unwillingly or in a, in a surprise situation and they just rise up and and yes. you know parenting never goes away and embrace these kids and do their very best to to raise them in spite of awkward circumstances uh, whatever support we can put out for that and whatever resources are available bravo yeah and uh we can see the audience counter while interviews are going along and that's certainly resonated with a lot of people in studio mary beth blair well usually when we are talking with mary beth it's either Youth Fair or Apple Harvest. And right. since it's the last week of September, it must be Apple Harvest. It is. We're getting so close. I, I can feel it. The excitement is bubbling in the air and uh, just right around the corner. I mean, Sunday's October 1st, so that officially kicks off How Apple did that Harvest happen? Festival month. I know, right? I mean, it, it really, time just keeps going faster and faster. But Nonetheless, we are excited. I'm, uh, as you said, Apple Harvest is one of my things. I'm on the board of the Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival. We're celebrating 44 years this this 44. year. This is our 44th uh, festival, and the dates are October 19th through the 22nd that's always the third full weekend so sometimes you'll have a weekend that might start like if for example well is it the third weekend with that first starting on the um october sunday you talk yourself whatever. Out of it now? okay never mind <laughs> third weekend we're third weekend uh -huh. so anyway so that's yeah but I say that because we also have some pre-events, too, coming up uh, the week before, like our Ruby and Rhinestone and, and another event that's new this year, our Fall Classic, which is in its third year. So, yeah, just this month is just all about, at least in our minds, Apple Harvest. But one of the things that I wanted to come on a little early and talk about, since October 1st is Sunday, we have a new uh contest this year we're trying to really get the community to be more excited to get more involved in apple harvest and really turn our town into apple um uh, an apple heritage reflection and our theme this year we always do a little sub theme from apple harvest and it's apple palooza and that was that was derived actually the idea came from anthony who's on our board anthony hess and mark jordan who own jordan and hess and we all know how creative they are and they just really wanted to kind of have a retro throwback to the early days of how our community used to come together to celebrate this this season and also they've experienced a lot of what the apple blossom does in winchester now we're just we are not on the same scale as that when people compare us i always say we are a all volunteer board we do not have full-time executive directors we do not have the same financing and income that that festival has they they do an amazing job but we shouldn't compare the two they're not the same mm -hmm. um but well, I will in saying that, boy, does Winchester get behind the apple blossom and they just turn their community into all about apple blossom. So what we're asking all of the city residents of Martinsburg and along the parade route, the businesses downtown, we're going to do a competition, the, de the decorating contest this year. And we're asking people to um to get involved and decorate and make it very festive. So that's something we're starting October 1st. And we're gonna be watching people who decorate. We're gonna be judging. We have a panel of judges. So I thought that would be fun to get people starting to think apple harvest. As much as apple orchards were a part of the Eastern Panhandle yes. for so many years, I'm surprised it's only year 44. I don't right. mean that in a negative way, but right. you, you would think that sure. as, as much well, as people are into the absolutely. youth fair have, right. has been going on for so long and what have you. 76 happened. years, yeah. but it's our heritage goes back 250 plus years mm -hmm. of orchards. But um, I mean, as early as the county existed, basically. But yes, the festival didn't come on the scene until... As 79 you, yeah. yeah and when chuck thornton said let's bring back there was an apple carnival originally pre i think civil war era or the depression era and that was what what we know it today kind of just a festival to get the community together excited and, and to celebrate our apple heritage um, and then of course 
you know, as circumstances would have it, they couldn't do it anymore. There was no finances. There was no celebrating during that time in our history. And then it was this. It was the idea of radio station owner Chuck Thornton to bring something back to our community like this, and thus it came back to life. And here we are in here year we number are. 44. Now it's yes. gone through some changes over the years, some things that Absolutely. used to happen have been modified to, yeah, to do other things and such. Absolutely. So what will be some of the major highlights for this year's festival? Well, we uh, pretty much everything is back other than the sports breakfast. You always like to talk about that because you're the sports guy and I get that. So we don't do that anymore. That kind of mm-hmm. fell off. Um, but we are, we, uh, we're bringing back, last year we introduced the rodeo and that was a very popular event down at the youth fairgrounds. Obviously that has nothing to do with Apple heritage. I get that. But the festival is about getting the community together just to celebrate and to do fun things that are outdoors and ag, ag related. And so that is a very popular event that usually happens during the the youth fair that the same group is coming back we did find out just yesterday we have contract in hand we've never had down at the youth fair grounds where we have all the apple contest the apple pie auction baby apple seed is crowned down there live entertainment all of those great things pop-up shops and arts fair this year we've added we're going to add a family carnival out on the the grounds not as big as what the youth fair would have but just another thing it's this time of year is tricky because it can most carnivals are starting to to wind down and shut down so we've always had trouble trying to bring that that feature to our festival but we can and we are um, bringing that to the festival on saturday and sunday down at the fairgrounds because as you know we start our festival on thursday with the royal gala at the hollywood casino that's where we introduce and honor this year's honored west virginian the festival is always presented an honored west virginian award and then the outgoing queen pomona will do her farewell and it's an opportunity to thank the sponsors of our festival and then of course friday kicks in to a big uh, flurry or of events we have the pomona ladies brunch which is extremely popular we have the coronation which the agriculture commissioner kent leonhart will be here to crown her and officially kicks off the festival and that happens at airborne event center that night we have the grand ball and queen's reception at holiday inn but then when we transition into saturday and sunday the bulk of the events are at the berkeley county youth fairgrounds now of course saturday is probably the most popular event of our festival over the 44 history years of history and that's our grand feature parade and again this year they are really working hard the committee is to bring that you know i guess Unfortunately, over the past few years and what we've experienced with different things, that the, the, the parade has you know lost some of its uh, luster. Well, a little bit and just participants and, and also our communities are just getting so much more busy. There's so much competition for activities. When I was growing up, Apple Harvest Festival weekend, that was it. There was nothing else going on. Nobody even dared to put something else on Harvest apple harvest festival weekend our families got our blankets we always had our special spots where we went and everything revolved around that now there's a lot of competition for that so you know people who normally might be in the parade now have lots of other competing interests i mean even the bands are sometimes hard to secure because they do band competitions on weekends but thankfully we do have our high schools all involved so we're happy about that Um, but again we're really trying to put a focus and bring some energy and excitement with the decorating the downtown so that people in the parade just feel that excitement when they're when they're downtown for that and prior or like preceding the parade is the bob bariner 5k apple trample Mm -hmm. which will go along the parade route and that starts at 10 30 sponsored by wb medicine I've heard the ads. Well, good. You should. How often do you you hear them? What's an apple trample? The apple trample is a 5K run or walk. It's it's family friendly and fur friendly from what they tell me, too, that they're, you're allowed to bring your pets along as well, but it's it is competitive. Um, so it's a competitive race. It's timed and chipped, but also a lot of people just walk it with their family. So that's just another um, tradition uh, that was added to the festival years ago 
Let's talk about the rodeo. Is it coming back? It is coming back. And when is that? It's Saturday. At We bumped it a little bit uh, this year. Last year it was at four. This year we're bumping it to five. We found last year a lot of people had trouble getting from the parade down to the fairgrounds in time. So that was almost a packed out house last year. And it, the weather was beautiful. So sometimes when you go to the rodeo in the summertime at the youth fair, it's so hot mm-hmm. and so crowded. You can't really even enjoy the rodeo. I had a blast at that last year it was really fun i went to the rodeo last year and yeah. absolutely loved oh, it oh did you for the apple harvest yeah, I did. wasn't it I fun did. it was a lot of fun yes. it's so americana yes um everybody had fun i you know just it smiles is. across the board it's and very patriotic like you said i love how they start with the flag and the horse comes I do. out and it's so and then uh, the prayer and then it's astonishing yes. how far cowboys can fly <laughs> oh, Whether yes. they want to or not. Wow, it is. It's a little scary, but hey. and how long eight seconds is? Yes, I mean it's like an oh hour and a half. That so they're, true. They're staying on these so horses. true. It's, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Mary but, Beth Blair is with us. By the way, we're talking about the Apple Harvest Festival, which is October nineteen to twenty-two this year. Yes. For whatever reason, I had the rodeo on a different day. So okay. it's, it's actually on the 21st? Saturday the 21st, okay. yes. That's and so don't miss it. No, so I know I if you enjoyed it last year. I did. And then Sunday, of course, at the fairgrounds, we have so many things going on. We have Saturday and Sunday, you can... Uh, it is absolutely delicious, and you aren't going to find anything for $10 like this. Homemade pancake breakfast, obviously featuring apples on the side. But it's made by you know our people, our local residents, and the Rotary also helps us with that. And that's on both mornings, so Saturday and Sunday at the fairgrounds, 8 to 12. We're, we're making sure we have give people plenty of time to enjoy that. We even have a church service on Sunday out at the youth fairgrounds. But Sunday is busy because we have the crowning of the baby apple seed contest which is simply a contest for the younger kids their photographs are submitted by parents or grandparents and they're on our website you can vote a dollar per child to get the title of baby apple seed um, that's a fundraiser for the youth fair but then also we will have a meet and greet with our grand marshal at the at the fairgrounds on sunday we have live entertainment from i think it's one to four thir- four one thirty to four and that will range from high school jazz bands to um, show choir dance teams, um, things of that nature. So that's just a nice, if it's a beautiful weather, it's nice to get out. We also have a record number of pop-up shops and arts artisans that are going to be there this year we've had to um open a third barn uh, you know if you know the barns down there so you have the exhibit hall or not the exhibit hall yes the exhibit hall is the in the commercial building that's full the goat barn is now full so we're having to open up probably the swine barn but they all will be clean, of course. The Youth Fair Ground does it, or Youth Fair Good Association that you pointed that out. does yeah. a, an amazing job of preparing the facilities for us so that it, it's just incredible. So, yes, there's all kinds of great vendors. And, of course, we'll have food vendors. Um, I'll take a breath for a second because I have a question okay. for you here. Uh, <laughs> well, Damon Wright it. commented okay. that he just submitted his application to be a vendor at the yes. Apple Harvest Festival. Can you still submit apps yes. going forward? Yes. Um, and if he has submitted it, it'll go to Jeannie Hamilton, who is our chairperson. Damon, I'll make sure sure Jeannie has that when I leave her today and we do have room for you all right now Jackie Long I didn't put her up to this Jackie right. Long posted this question why did the sports breakfast disappear oh gosh I'm telling you I didn't put her up to it it's always hard to talk about things you don't ever want to throw anyone under the bus we've talked about this before but it became I will I'm always a very diplomatic and positive person so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say it became very very difficult to gather the athletes with the coordination of all the high schools you don't want to just have it featuring one school right it was a it was designed originally to recognize all the schools in both jefferson berkeley and morgan county and it just we were the last one we had it was down to the wire like we weren't getting submissions till the day of it's very hard to do that you know it's very hard to put a breakfast together now one of the other big things is we didn't have we were almost out of space that day We probably had too many people at that last sports breakfast that I'm trying to think of the last one that we had who who it was with. It probably was with Rodriguez. Is that what was that his name? I can't remember, but I feel Mm. like he might have been the last one that was there. Um, But then, of course, during the pandemic, we couldn't have any of those gatherings. And then when we came back from that, we started seeing where the interest for all the different events were. That was one we struggled to get participation in so i'm not saying it's it's gone forever 
it, 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 there's a possibility. What I will say is the event that we threw into the festival, again, during the season of uh, having to do outdoor things, we, that year, we, we were, obviously we didn't do 2020 festival that year. They did a virtual 5K that year. That was the extent of it. And we did some Apple Heritage education to keep the festival alive. But in 2021, when, when we brought back the modified version, we introduced the fall classic which is the weekend before so it's a it's a baseball tournament held at the Musselman High School baseball complex that involves uh, athletes from all of the areas um, area high schools and uh, we that, that has become a very popular event so that's our sports involvement we had Daryl Strawberry as a celebrity um, and he, that year and he spoke to the the students we did honor students in the gymnasium that year on a different level we didn't have the breakfast but again it's not something that's gone forever but it was a big thing that um i believe at that time the rotary helped us with and then they weren't interested in continuing it is what i understand that's not my committee that's not my event mm -hmm. so i can't speak to it a hundred percent so i'm sorry about that jackie i'll i'll try to get i'm gonna try to get the chairperson of that event on here so we can throw him under the bus no i just <laughs> i know you guys i know the public wants answers so i definitely will try to get that for you it's not like we're hiding anything or i i should know this i, I being on the board exactly but there was just a lot of elements to it not coming together so I know uh, Mike Cornby was behind the stag breakfasts yeah. for a couple of years, uh, or at least one. And maybe the right. pandemic disrupted that, too. Yes. Because I know Rocky Blyer was the speaker yes. for one year. Yes. Which was pretty cool for me because when yeah. I was... He um, was a great speaker. 11. He was the speaker at my fifth grade football banquet. Oh, my gosh. Right? Wow. Full circle moment, huh? Yeah. So yeah. then 50 years later, basically... Right. You know, give or take, he's speaking at the stag right. breakfast. So I didn't get to introduce him when I was 11, though. So, right. So. And you did at that. And you have to yeah. understand, too, of course, we're everyone is still in some ways. I mean, we're back in full with all of our activities. But, you know, you, you always when you suffer from a year without a festival, that's a year without funds, you know, because we are, as I said, an all volunteer, all you know, if everything, every penny that we make goes into the festival, everything that we raise, we don't have huge grants or anything like that. So we're always constantly looking for the community support. Well, that was certainly a hard year for our festival to recover from financially and then build back. A lot of businesses couldn't give at the same levels as they were giving to sponsor events. So, you know, that's still a work in progress for us. We're working hard as a board to get more sponsorships. We're as healthy as we've ever been at coming out of us a time like that so i feel the future is so bright for us to continue to grow and add events and hopefully maybe add that back are if, you yeah. are, are you doing the apple pie baking contest absolutely Where so will that be? and that's another exciting thing i'm glad you brought that up rob that's super i didn't even tell you to 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 give me that little hint i but just love apple pie i know well this year we've had we added a new division so we have a, a a student division so a lot of the high school um home ec groups or classes will participate students can participate uh, adults not like you or me or you john could participate but this year we also added a business category so those who are in the business like maybe uh oars or spring valley or people who commercially make pies for their restaurants they can submit an entry into the business um, um, division and we can see who the who has the best apple pie to go out to eat somewhere or go purchase so we're excited about adding the business division and you can find all that info on our website msahf.com and yeah so. over the 44 years yes have the winners been of the sweet pie variety or the tart pie it's interesting variety? i guess it all depends on the judging group because you know judging is subjective to whatever your taste is and so every year that changes we have celebrity judges we have different businesses that are involved mr stubblefield has judged in in the past too so you'd have to ask that individual judge uh, it's last year now one of the things we do on sunday is the top 10 winning pies are auctioned off and so that's kind of a coveted thing to come out and buy the winning pies with the slice and, missing yeah exactly for the judges <laughs> you're right and it is that way and i know my um in the past different people who i know who've purchased them have said you know it's interesting like last year this pie was 
more on the sweet tart side mm -hmm. um or i guess it would you can't really be well i guess it's sweet and tart yeah but uh, tart and i guess it all depends on the apples they use and it's interesting sometimes you can find out from them what their what their secret ingredients are but a lot of times they won't tell you which is kind of neat too but one of the cool things is our winner last year casey fields is now on the committee she uh has joined our team and is, is a part of that along with uh candace dalton who's who, who is or organizing that so you can go to our website and app, app, fill out an application although october 6th is the deadline mm -hmm. And, and the uh, the Berkeley Springs Apple Butter Festival yes. is next weekend, mm -hmm. not this weekend, but next weekend. And exactly. I, I know for many years in the 90s, um, I would hit the Berkeley Springs Apple Butter yep. Festival, and then I think it was it would, it would either be the next weekend or the weekend after the right. Apple Harvest uh Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival right. too, and you just uh, you're loaded up with all sorts of apple butter, apple pies, apple this it's and that. It's just apple season. It but, is. You know, we it's live October. in apple country, so yeah. it's important. Uh, that's all good stuff. It all yeah. it all makes for a good quality of life in the area, and then lots of fun stuff to do and whatever. How much of this stuff is uh, free to attend, and how much do you have to pay for? Um, there are free, and there there are, it's a fifty fifty. But it, for the bulk of the events, if you come to the fairgrounds, you're going to pay five dollars to get in, and you have access to everything. You know, pay an additional fee for the rodeo. Of course, the parade. Of, obviously, that's a free event. The coronation at Airborne Event Center is a free event. Our ruby and rhinestone. Our um, um, uh, the, the baseball game, I think there's like a $5 fee to get in. Um, so Ruby and Rhinestone, the Royal Gala, the Grand Ball, those three events are ticketed because we have to pay for the hotel facilities and mm -hmm. the food. Um, if we could make them all, if we had a sponsor that paid for all that, then we could make them open to the public, but then we probably wouldn't have room. So, you know, you always have ticketed items that, you know, have limited seating and are meant for, as to be um to pay for the, the event that, that we have. Those that we can, we do open up free, like I said. So if, if I really would encourage anyone who's from the area who has the time to come out to our coronation on Friday night at 6 p.m. at Airborne. It is one of them. It's very short ceremony, so it's not like you have to just drop in for 30 minutes and see the pomp and circumstance of that event. We have the cadets that will be there from our local ROTC um, cadet groups. Um, there, there is a... Um, uh, what is the guy with the uh, what I can't even think I can see him with he his bagpiper the ba bagpiper is there the agriculture commissioner with his scroll and just how he declares the opening of the festival it's just a really neat experience to see Queen Pomona um, crowned and of course Queen uh, the, that had that word and that title you know derived from Pomona being the uh, she in, in I guess literature she was known as someone who protected and watched over the harvest and so that is what our queen does she is she represents our festival and helps to educate people about our apple heritage did you ever compete in the queen never. pomona i never did about miss berkeley county youth fair no i never did not a pageant girl huh well i do have i did one but i'm not we're not talking about we're not today, talk so. about that okay yeah. Fair enough. All right, uh, about two minutes left. Anything else you need to get across that you have not? Well, I just would love to invite everyone in the community to be a part of it. It's not too late to be a sponsor. It's not too late, obviously, to mark your uh, calendar and be a part of our F Festival. We are. Um, we have deadlines coming up to, for s tickets for events, so get online to our, our website, msahf. Dot com. Also, we have uh, rack cards that are out in the community now. Our magazines, Mr. Hornby told me, would be out this weekend. So we'll, lots of information. Educate yourself. Get to the events. Experience something. If nothing else, come to the, the obviously, the parade is such a highlight. But join us and, and experience Apple Harvest with us. And that'll be going down King Street? Yes. All right, very good. Um, well, partly, yes. But you know what time it starts? Queen, yes. Oh, yes, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Very good. Mary Beth, great to see you again. Always. And I'll be back. I'll bring the maid elect. I'll bring some other folks. We'll make it fun and interesting. I'll be here. All right. Sounds Probably. good. Okay. Probably. Okay. <laughs> Likely. Likely. No, tomorrow's not guaranteed. We have no idea. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> and suddenly we take a turn for the worst. I know. Philosophical. <laughs> this, uh,